think a combination of both, but obviously they had something to do with us not playing well. So, you know, we just – we got a lot of shots that we just need to make. We got great looks at times. You know, we missed layups. We missed open jump shots. We missed – stuff and a team like that like the shots that they got are shots they get every game but they made them yeah you know and on the season they're shooting I think 39 percent so to come in and shoot 58 percent we need to do a better job defensively um I didn't think we were very very sharp defensively in the first half especially um it's not happy with our response to mistakes we didn't bounce back quickly like we normally do just um we just needed to play a lot better against such a quality opponent than we did tonight one of the glaring stats, one of 21 from behind the arc. It looked like a lot of those shots were even still out of your comfort zone with their length. They were kind of pushing mm -hmm. you back a little bit more. Yeah, you know, just their length made us play, I think, a little bit faster. Um, and that's really hard to simulate in practice. We're on spring break. We didn't have any scout guys. And we, honestly, in the back of my mind, I was worried about it. But I was like, we'll be fine. We've played 28 games. You know, we'll be fine. But um, we just, we did. We got good looks. And then later in the game, when it was out of hand, we had wide open looks that we still weren't making. We just weren't sharp. Um, not nearly as sharp as we needed to be. And it's unfortunate to have an opportunity to have such a good quality opponent coming in. They're going to play in the tournament. They'll probably be a pretty good seat going into the tournament. We had a great opportunity to kind of showcase our program. This is what we have. This is how we match up with a team like that. So to to have the game go this way, is, it's really disappointing. Is When you see a team like that, you know, and you compare your team, is the difference in skill level um, – Obviously, probably not as much as it was tonight, but more in speed or athleticism or strength, or how would you say that puts the difference? I'd say just size at certain positions, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they, they're really long on the perimeter. Uh, number one who starts for them, you know, she's about six foot, and her arms are so long. She just does a great job on the ball, and they can cover ground quickly. So if they take a chance, they can get back into the play quick, very quickly just with their length and size and stuff, and then they block shots, you know, at every position or in – as a player, when you go in, you're always thinking where they're coming from, that kind of thing, because they can just make up so much ground, I think. Um, but just, no, you know, no excuses. Some of those, they weren't blocking shots, and we just, you know, we had a wide-open layup to start the game, and we, we missed that. Like, that shot's got to go in and set the tone. Like, all right, we scored, we're here, we're ready to play. Yeah. Um, good learning experience for our team. Um, you know, we play them again next year at their place, and they have a, a great core group of seniors, Arkansas does. And, you know, we lose Maddie and Malia, but our team needs to remember, you know, this game. Like, they came into our, our place, and they really kicked our butt. And just, just to follow up, to add to that a little bit, um, I'll do a story on, like, the difference of women's basketball now, maybe 10 to 20 years ago. It mm -hmm. just seems like there's the speed and athleticism more, the size more. Uh, what, what has made the game better? Yeah, I think players – you know, that long ago when they're younger and they're t and they're tall, they kind of are like, okay, you're a post. That's not the case anymore. Yeah. It's like you can play you're, you can play point guard if you're if you're good enough now. Yeah. Um, and you see some of their best ball handlers at you know at the elite levels are six foot to six three. You know, Maya Moore is six two and she's a tremendous guard. Yeah. Um, but you know, on their team, their third string, they came in. Their ball skills were fantastic. That last group they had on the floor, I mean, you couldn't leave any of those kids open. They could hit, right. make open shots. They had good ball handling skills good passers you know and their first group was extremely athletic and you know maybe they're not as good as shooters but they do something else really really well so to have like a third string that can come in you know their depth is tremendous you know at Arkansas and I think if you go to elite programs in the SEC or Big East things like that um, the players that don't maybe get a lot of opportunities they're still extremely good basketball players on so, their bench. So is maybe depth the most the, the difference maybe so in the women I mean it seems more apparent it used to be Mm -hmm. You know, Connecticut, UConn, you know, maybe three or four teams and then a big drop off, and it seems like it's mm -hmm. compacting a little bit. Is, is it more about depth or more about size or speed or quickness? I think just recruiting. There's more mm -hmm. people going after, you know, and there's better basketball players coming up, and there's more players yeah. to choose from, and then you get players that have a pretty good starting point, and they work really hard for two or three years, and all of a sudden their junior year, they're a much better basketball player, um, or they've been, they get coached very well and are given some tools and they're good. Um, but I think that's what the girls touched on earlier. That's the difference in our team, you know, from last being like a mirrored record from last year. It's just mm -hmm. our depth. Like we've had games where our second leading scorer, Jasmine Hill, has zero points and we can still win. If that happened a year ago, there was no way we were winning, you know. And so that's that's the difference. And you look at Arkansas, like a couple of those kids could have a bad game and they have yeah. the next person coming in that could kind of do what, they're, what they weren't doing. You mentioned this as being like a learning experience for next year. I mean – 
they you finished third in the OBC mm -hmm. Power Conference. Can you kind of see that different mm -hmm. intensity level? Sure. So is that something that they can take forward with them, kind of yeah. to see where they need to be? Yeah, I think um, just it's just the size and how quickly they recover back into space. Like you mentioned, you know, you think you're open, and as soon as you turn, somebody else is there. Um, and that's something that to get over the hump that can't bother you. You have to just be okay. They're there now. What am I looking for next? Um, and again, it's tough to simulate in practice, and it's something we need to do a better job of as a program, getting our players ready for a game like this, just so we're not out there and it's like, uh, you know, we got a little bit frazzled with their press. And, you know, everybody on the floor has to want the ball against the press like that. And some of our players kind of weren't sure. We were indecisive, and that's exactly what the press is designed to do, and it worked. Instead of saying, I want the ball, this is what we're looking for. And it's, you know, a press we've seen a ton of times this year, but not at players of that size, you know. Madison. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Madsen and Malia, four years here, mm -hmm. and they, they talked about a little bit just how far the program's come in those years and yep. then how much the success has been because of the core group that started this. Just Ab talk about absolutely. that. Absolutely. They completely laid the foundation for our expectations on a daily basis. How hard are we going to work as people in the classroom and on the court? And they exemplify what we want our student athletes to be like. You know, Jesse Stapleton, Jesse, uh, Jenny Weiss, they were in that core group. Brittany Emig, like that whole core group, they were, you know, one of my favorite. Uh, groups to coach because they got everything out of their ability and as a coach that's all you can ask for you know that every day was great to work with them every game I thought we'd win every game and maybe not win but we never got blown out because they just worked so hard like all the time and so that work ethic has been the standard of our program so to get you know we get more talent or more size like they mentioned each year but if you don't work hard it doesn't mean anything so they've set the bar for what we do in practice every day and how we prepare to play an opponent and how hard we you know, learn the scout, know the scout, and that's, you know, just a direct result of them. How much it would it mean to you to get in the WBI or play in the postseason? Is that like a validation of that you did something well this year? Sure, and I, and I want that to be the expectation of, of this program. Year in and year out is that, you know, we go to the conference tournament, we try to win it, we try to, you know, we go to the NCAA, and if that doesn't happen, we're in a position to play in the WNIT or the WBI. You know, so to do it this year just continues to set the standard of what we expect every year. You talked about the uh, the recognition that you guys have received from the LBC, your coach of the year. You, Katie gets a couple of awards. Yeah, you know um, it's great, um, but without total team play, those re you know those awards don't happen. And Ravens a post player. We say she, you know she's got to rebound somebody's misses or she's got to catch the ball from somebody so because she, she's not bringing it up. Um, and then you know for Katie, it's it's a fantastic award to be you know the one freshman picked out of eleven teams. That's that's a great great accomplishment and in the first year eligible like these are the first awards that our program's ever gotten you know and I think Jasmine Hill was she could have easily gotten you know first or second team also I thought she had a solid enough season um, but again none of those happen without each other and I told her team as far as coach of the year it was all because they exceeded expectations they thought we'd finish eighth and our team didn't and that's all it came down to and they they were mad when they picked us eighth and they said we're not finishing eighth and you know that was totally about them wanting to do better than what they thought and so I'm appreciative that they recognize me, but without our team putting it in their mind that that wasn't going to happen, you know, I would have never gotten that award. Would you uh, think you'd hear Monday or Tuesday about WBI? Should hear Monday for Monday. sure. Yeah, because it'd be NCAA, NIT, and then right. probably. Mm -hmm. uh, what would it mean? In addition, if you'd be in there to get a home game, that'd be like icing on the cake, so to speak. <laughs> well, we got to shoot it a lot better than we shot it tonight, <laughs> you know. And as well as we played on the road, you, you know, we played so well on the road, um, just doesn't make any sense from a, a logic standpoint. We practice every day in here. Yeah. We shoot every day in here. And, you know, you just – you think we'd, we'd shoot it a little better. But I think it would be great for our fans, our community, and the university if we were able to host a home game. You know, that would be the first time ever at the Division One level we did that. And, I, you know, one more chance for our seniors to play here and our fans to see us – on the home court and um you know we've all year wanted to get the crowd better get it fill it in but you know we talk about they need something to cheer about you know this is really something to cheer about in the community on the campus you know this is the first ever event in the situation that could happen and that's a memory to look back on like i was at the first whatever you know yeah i think that'd be great it, it for might the be a first for the pro i'm not sure i think the men played a glbc first round game here once i don't know if the women have ever done yeah. it so it might be the first time in the history yeah. of the program. Eric says no. It's not <laughs> yeah, so if we get one, I mean, we want – I would love to sell the place out and get it rocking. And, you know, and if we win, depending on seeds, you can host us the next game also. So that would be exciting. Yeah.